So this is going to be a, a brief video on um, another take on uh, dementia. This is a, <clears throat> a group from uh, University of Edinburgh. They uh, published something. It was covered in, a, in a, um, another journal, a, a science uh, public digest type of journal. A friend and patient of mine sent this to me. And the, the headline is, New Drug uh, Shows Promise for Preventing and Even Reversing Damage from Age-Related Dementia and Stroke. Now, <clears throat> what's interesting about this, again, I won't get into the drug itself. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the mechanisms that they're discussing. At first, you think, well, uh, when you compare this to somebody like Bredes Dale Bredesen and the end of dementia, it sounds very, very different. It's focused on small vessel uh, disease. However, as you read a little bit more deeply, what becomes interesting is the some of the recurring themes that we tend to see with endothelium, endothelial damage, small vessels, um, and of course the things that could be could be damaging those, like insulin resistance and um, LP little a and ApoE4, <clears throat> in addition to our everybody's old friend LDL. Um, so before we get into that, though, a brief introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, started off as an ER doc until I got very frustrated seeing what people bring into the ER that should have been prevented. And uh, went to Hopkins to get training, uh, went on to run the program there in uh, preventive medicine. Have been uh, running programs and teaching docs, primary care docs, how to do prevention and the science behind prevention and practical aspects um, ever since, decades since then. Um, <clears throat> if, you're not, if you're more into just being told what to do, this again is probably not one of those uh, videos. It's a little bit more of an expl exploration into some common threads that we see when we're talking about dementia. So <clears throat> again, they're talking about small vessel disease. If you look at the, uh, the lit review on this article, Basically, they say um, up to 45% of cognitive decline, significant, significant cognitive decline, is associated with small vessel disease. Again, you get some argument and debate around that, um, but I don't think anybody has conclusive proof uh, about any of this. We just continue to circle around some of these general themes, and again, that's what these general themes are covering, and that's why I'm, uh, I've come, I'm covering this article. Another thing they go on to say is, um, if you look at the, the lit review and the research, 90%, excuse me, 95% of adults age 60 to 90 have evidence of small vessel disease. In other words, we're all clog clogging our arteries. Now, if that seems like it's outlandish, I'll tell you, no, it's not. As a physician who focuses on heart attack, stroke prevention, um, dealing with the onslaught of aging. I can tell you, uh, don't, you don't have to trust me. Just uh, if you're between 60 and 90, go out and get a few tests, a CIMT, um, of course a hemoglobin A1C, but that's not really going to be uh, that conclusive. I would add a, uh, an OGTT, oral glucose tolerance test, um, an insulin survey, look at LP little a, uh, cholesterol test, a few of those things. You start to get that information, a, a broader set of information, and you'll realize, yes, there is clear evidence that the vast majority of us, once we get past um, 60, are starting to do damage to the small vessels in our body. Well, that's okay. It's just the small vessels, right? Well, unfortunately, those small vessels... Um, <clears throat> supply everything from our heart to our kidneys to our brain. So again, <clears throat> there are those of us who think that small vessel disease, not maybe not this narrow definition, but a broader definition of small vessel disease and endothelial damage, is the uh, a significant part of the mechanism for aging. So. <clears throat> Um, in this study, they, they 
used some sort of drug, which they said decreased uh, endothelial damage. Again, I'm not going to get into the type of drug, but what they said was um, when you get this uh, small vessel disease, you, you get a decrease in the ability to make myelin. Again, a reminder back to Bredesen and some of his discussion about the mechanism of, of uh, cognitive decline. He's talking about um, uh, connections, the connections between the nerves. Uh, they're called synapses. And he says, <clears throat> and you can read this when, if you read the, uh, the book, Why We Sleep. Every night when we sleep, uh, there are a couple of different mechanisms going on. One is increasing the synapses between the nerves in our network, called our central nervous system or our brain. And then there are some other activities where you're stopping those synapses. According to uh, Bredesen, there's just an imbalance where you're stopping and breaking and breaking and breaking more and more synapses. Um, we do create the vast majority of our synapses the first few months, a uh, couple of years of our life. So <clears throat> you start saying, okay, you're, uh, you've got some breakdown in myelin, you're not making myelin anymore, you're getting breakdown of your synapses, of course. Uh, you get a general pattern of that for a couple of decades and you're going to get dement dementia. Now, <clears throat> so what they did was they took lab rats uh, and they were actually able to arrest the development of uh, dementia. These were lab rats that had a, I believe, a genetic um, predisposition for small vessel disease. <clears throat> There's a corresponding author, Anna uh, Williams, and her point was, you know what? Um, this is very critical, big information, uh, big story. Well, maybe, we'll see. Again, uh, as you may know, I have, you can look at my video on Viribisestat. There are a gazillion drugs that have been tried to be the, uh, the key that unlocks the cure for dementia, and I'm very skeptical that one of those is going to happen. She does bring up a good point, though, that here's the question. Once you get significant damage, um, are you going to be able to reverse that damage? And again, it gets back to one of the general themes that, that we look at, and that is the value of preventing something before it happens. But in order to prevent something, you need to know that it's happening in a much more subtle route than what most of us take a look at. The, um, <clears throat> the journalist was published in with Science and Translational Medicine. Again, uh, if I started to go off into the quality or importance of that journal of, or of this science or um, the drug itself, it would take a little bit too long. So thank you again for your interest.